Hi, this is Christy with Sapphire Skies Farm. I wanted to give you my first garden tour of 2020. Let's go. So looking out the front, um, I have these hanging baskets here. They have lettuce growing in them. They're not very big, but they're coming. And then along this back wall here, this is um, where I have blueberries and raspberries. Let's get close and take a look at those blueberries. The raspberries haven't quite developed yet. And then on this back wall back here, I have loofah and grapes and more loofah. And then along this um, cattle panel here, I'm growing loofah coming up. You can see here I have a couple of little pots that I still haven't um, put in the ground. But they're going to go in. And in the very background is our two little bunnies. They are Rex bunnies. They're both white. So here's the raspberries. Like I said, I haven't seen any flowers on them yet. But they're coming, I can tell. But behind there, you can see some blueberries. Mmm, tasty. I just pulled about two handfuls off a couple days ago. <laughs> and the kids got to eat them. Some Cosmos mixed in, some more raspberries coming up. More raspberries here. Okay, there's some good blueberries coming along. Oh, oh, oh. Tasty, tasty. I'm gonna eat a couple and leave the rest for the kids. And then some more raspberries. This is another raspberry, not quite yet flowering. Oh, I missed this one. This will be a pink lemonade blueberry. This is a sunflower my cats knocked it over. It was so frustrating. But hopefully they got whatever they were chasing. Mmm, this is my newest blueberry bush. Giving us some blueberries already. I had a um, gopher eat the roots of a blueberry bush, so I went in and planted this one and then put a cage around it to keep the gophers out. Those are those gopher cages. Oh, aren't these so pretty? I love Cosmos. Hi, bunnies. Nice to see you this morning. This is um, a ground cherry. It's just starting to really grow back. Declan loves them. They make these little lantern things. And then a fruit pops out of it. Isn't that fun? And they have kind of like a nutty fruity flavor. It's the best way I can describe it. Banana trees are coming along. These are some pineapple down here. The plumeria. And then I just had this open space between this area so I threw some kale in and we feed this to our bunnies. Hi Miss Nora. I have this um bathtub here. Someday I have dreams for this bathtub. But for now, it's just a focal point in my garden. <laughs> this is my asparagus bed. It's year two asparagus. So next year I'll be able to harvest this stuff. See how it's very ferning out. The first two years you let it go to seed and then the third year you can start harvesting. I have another bed I'll show you that's um, on year one. This hot mess is my year one asparagus bed. So asparagus really likes rich soil. So I threw what was in my compost bin in here and I have a lot of pumpkins or other squashes that popped up and tomatoes. So this all, I'm just letting it work as like mulch right now for these little tiny baby ferning asparagus in here. See one back there. If you look right there. Here's one that got knocked over. 
so they're coming along. It's um, taken me, what, nine, eight, nine years to really get to the point where I'm ready to start asparagus because it's hard to commit to something for three years. Um, but I think this is our forever home. And so with asparagus, it will feed you for generations. So once it's planted and established, it will keep coming back year after year after year. Some people uh, have it in areas where many, many years ago someone planted it. And so they're able to get it what in what is now just an empty field. Me, not so much. <laughs> I gotta grow up myself. Good morning to you, too. The birds are doing good this morning. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. <laughs> so we have two roosters. They like to, like, crow back and forth. Hi, guys. Good morning. How's everyone doing today? <laughs> Baby turkeys. I'm just coming out and doing an early morning tour and all the animals are still sleeping. Hi guys! Good morning! So I'm gonna head down into the garden. I, um, I have big projects coming along here that are gonna happen and our goat pen is almost done. We've got our fencing that needs to go up. We've got some painting that needs to happen, but it's all fun. I'll come back to you ladies, don't worry. We're doing the garden tour. All right, so we've got some banana trees here. Strawberries. Mmm, delicious. And then behind all this zebra mallow, I have two orange trees that are hiding. <laughs> they're just like little dwarf mandarins and they're only about six months old planted here. The strawberries are really coming along. Yum. This to me is the taste of summer. Strawberries and tomatoes. Now we'll go into the garden. And you'll see that I have another clawfoot tub that is going to have a purpose here soon. Mm, some nasturtiums. Nasturtiums are great in your garden for repelling pests. There's the orchard. So in the orchard we have this chamoya tree. And then this is a grapefruit. And then we have three different types of guavas there. An avocado, an apple, two Mexican sweet limes. There's a nectarine you can't see, it's on the other side. Um, I put some lavender in there. And then there's another apple. This is another dwarf mandarin. And then on the other side of the this playhouse here. This is where the ducks go when they need some respite during the day. Usually the ducks and geese hang out here during the day, but I just haven't got them out yet because it's very early in the morning. So on the other side of this, I'll show you the loquat tree when we go over there. But here is my garden getting watered. I just bought more marigolds to add to the garden. So in here I've got some strawberries and a watermelon. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna let the watermelon grow up this or if I'll let it trail out. A few strawberries that I haven't quite found the home for and a cucumber that I haven't found the home for yet. And here is a long, long line of trellising plants. So we've got a bunch of tomatoes. 
These are rattlesnake green beans. Got a bell pepper down here. On this side I have, this is all of the um, pickling cucumbers. And then these are my last two tomatoes I planted. This is an upstate ox heart tomato plant, and this one is a pineapple. These are like garden sweet cucumbers in here. Oh, look at this, my first Cherokee purples. Looks like it might get a little cat facing. It's pretty normal for the big varieties to get cat facing. The golden queen tomatoes. I kind of planted my tomatoes in succession, so as I go along, these they'll get bigger and bigger. These will be the rainbow cherry tomatoes. These two here. On the side here, I've got the honeydew and a pickle bush cucumber. And a watermelon. This will be a summer sunrise tomato. This is the potato leaf type of tomato. So some tomatoes have this potato leaf and then some have this tomato leaf. See the difference there? Hiding in between I have a watermelon that will come and sprawl all down once it's going. This is another sun summer sunrise tomato. You can see the same potato leafing. I'm not seeing any tomatoes on it yet. These um, four tomato plants, there's Two here, I know they're the same variety, and two there, I know they're the same variety. But my toddler pulled the tags out, so I don't know what variety they are. It'll be a surprise. But we're getting a tomato on it already. Same here, some big ones. So I'm gonna guess this will be the golden plum. I'm just not sure. They're looking really good. Here we have my first Amish paste tomato growing. These are supposed to be really big, meaty tomatoes. I've got some more rattlesnake beans. And these are my asparagus I started from seed that I'm going to plant over in that first year bed. These are marigolds and borage, both really good companion plants for the tomato. Here's a Rutgers tomato. They're coming along. This is a golden midget melon. So it will be a small watermelon and when it is ripe it will turn from green to yellow on the outside so I'll know it's ripe. I'm very excited about these. Upstate ox heart. These are supposed to be gigantic tomatoes, but oh yes, I was thinking I hadn't got any yet. My very first one. The seed packet said that it's really hard to actually get seeds out of these, and so they have a hard time actually reproducing. So it'll be interesting to see how this works out. So this entire row is six tomato plants that are all striped romas. So let's see if we have any, oh I do, there's some. Some striped ones coming. So you can already kind of make out what the stripe's gonna look like. Once it's turning red. Let's see if there's any other ones in here. Hmm, lots of flowers. Oh, there we go. 
Find some back there. When you um, come and hang out in your garden and you see your tomato flowers, just do a little -la 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 -la. and that will help to pollinate them. Should the bees not make it? Because they tomatoes are self-pollinating. They just need a little bit of wind or to have you do that. This is gonna be my mammoth sunflower. The flower head's growing. It's not big yet though. This is our newest apple. It's a green Granny Smith apple. We just planted this this year. And then here we have a cauliflower that I thought died. It came back. We'll see what it does. Some peanuts, lemon cucumber. This is my favorite little cucumbers. They're about the size of a lemon and they look kind of like a lemon when they're ready. They turn yellow. Um, they're great for like the kids. I just peel one cucumber per kid and let them eat it. So I'm growing a bunch of those lemon cucumbers this year. This green bean here is actually a scarlet runner bean. More and more and more and more strawberries. Yum. Along my back fence here, I have a whole bunch of this passion fruit vine growing. I'm hoping to get like full privacy along my hardware mesh. I use hardware mesh all the way along the whole outside of the garden and then underneath. And then we've actually like kind of sewn the two together on the corners here. It's down below, you can't see it, but to try to keep critters from crawling under and digging up. I didn't do it last year and I had come them coming in. So that's what I've had to do. It's a this will be like a full-size cucumber, like a regular slicer. A little more nasturtiums. So nasturtiums are actually edible. You can eat the flowers and the leaves. The leaves have kind of a peppery flavor. Since I'm here, I'm gonna eat a strawberry. Mmm, they're so good. <laughs> Okay, on to the next row of tomatoes. So I actually have a pluot tree here with my first little pluot growing on it. Mmm, it's getting big. So this will turn golden when it's ready. Some bachelor buttons to bring in the pollinators. <laughs> oh man. This, my friends, is the worst cat facing. Oh, yuck. Some plants just really suffer from that cat facing. Like, this is a good flower, but I'll probably have a whole bunch of these on this whole plant. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> and this is the next one next to it. So my seed packet said Mikado. So I planted Mikados and I got two different types of leaves from it. One was this potato leaf variety and one was this tomato leaf variety. And they both sprouted from the same packet. So the seeds must have got mixed up. So I <laughs> planted them side by side to see them growing. And I'm gonna guess that they are not both Mikado because this looks like a little tomato. And this looks like a big beefy tomato. Yikes. So I think seed companies do their very best to make sure that their seeds are true to the plant that they are intending. But sometimes there are mistakes. And so I think this is one of the times where my seed packet must have just got mixed with another type of seed um, before it came to me because these are definitely two different types of tomatoes. Planted in with my tomatoes, I just 
put in onions all over. If you look along all this rows, you can see I have them all the way along the back there. And then this is our last row of the tomatoes that are all in a row that I planted successively. So these will have the biggest tomatoes growing. This is like a big, long, dripping thing of tomatoes. It's fun to see them grow like in progression. So you can see more nasturtiums mixed in here. Yes. This guy is going to be so big. Oh, someone found him. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's always so sad to find in the garden. <laughs> it's the one I've been looking forward to. Oh, but we got a big one here. Two. Surprise. It was hiding behind the sleeve. Going big. There is a um, spider web here, and I'm going to just leave it because maybe that will keep my tomato from being eaten. Here's some more of the nasturtium. Ooh. Looking good. I believe this is the golden plum. Getting big. I feel like I can taste these tomatoes. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. And this, my friends, is Ruby's absolute favorite. This is the yellow pear tomatoes. None of them are yellow yet. They are super fun little cherry tomatoes to just chew on. We've got an onion getting big over here on this end. It's good. It's all coming along. Since I'm here, give these guys a little Tappy tap. Some more marigolds in here. Another golden midget melon. <clears throat> oh, garden froggy. Where'd you go? Hi, froggy. So I brought a whole bunch of frogs into the garden too, um, to try to get my bug population down. And it's been really fun to see the little froggies in the garden. Hanging out by that watermelon. You stay there, eat up. Oh, this is a variety I'm really excited about because I've never tried it and it, it's called Mandarin Moon. I'll let you see the text. Maybe I'm not pronouncing that right. But they're supposed to turn white when they're ready. I wasn't sure how they would grow if they would like be green when they started or not but that's fun right next to it I've got some parsley here's some more of those rattlesnake beans looks like they get these purple flowers cute so I'm hoping that these will all trail us all the way up here's the cantaloupe this is another yellow pear I just planted because one is just not enough, right? And then I can smell the basil. Delicious, nutritious. And I have one last onion right here. It looks like it is, I tried to go to flower and I lopped it off. I'm not sure if it'll grow a bulb or not. We're on the back side of the orchard now. And there is that low quad tree. I told you I would show you right there. It's about a year old being in the ground, so it's not really producing fruit yet, but it's one of my favorites. So this bed has some Romanesco broccoli that actually didn't end up producing any flower heads yet. So I'm gonna leave it to see if we get any flower heads. I was gonna, I had plans for this bed this year, which is why you won't see any zucchini in my garden yet or any other squashes really 
um, that I planted on purpose because that's what I was planning on doing here, but I'm gonna let these go and see what they do. Along this back wall here, you can see this scarlet runner bean going up. I love those red flowers. You can see them all the way across the garden. Super cool. All right, so in this bed, I have two artichoke plants and I knew that they would get really big, but it might take them some time to get big. So inside there, I also planted some edamame. And edamame's in the bean family, and so it will put nitrogen back into the soil and hopefully feed this artichoke just enough. I'm hoping it still flowers and it won't be too much, but. And then in through here, I, there's a bunch of this purslane and I actually feed this to the chicken, so I wait to pull it until it gets about this size. So these will be going to the chickens today. They love it. Here is the barn. And along the side of the barn, I'm trying out that, um, it's kind of like a seed tape, except it's like a seed carpet. You can see a little spot where my cats must have dug up to catch a animal or something, but I planted it here. Oh, it's working. Oh, there's some little seedlings coming up. So if I move it just a little bit, you can see that there's like this carpety stuff under there. Maybe I'll get a whole bunch of flowers all along here. This is what that um, carpet stuff was I was saying. It's like roll out flowers. Be interesting to see what comes up, right? Here's the back side of the barn. There it is. There's a lot of little seedlings coming up. <laughs> now this nasturtium is not part of that pack. I had already planted that here before I decided to build this little bed around the barn. So. Hopefully it uh, allows the other flowers to still grow. And these are little tiny currant tomatoes. They won't get very big. There's so many on here. So yummy. Oh my goodness. This is the cauliflower. It's just starting to um, make the cauliflower. Each cauliflower really only produces one cauliflower head. Got another grapevine growing up here. This will be table grapes. I just planted that this year, so probably won't get any grapes this year. But there is some more cauliflower heads going. And a slug. No, no slug. Pretty fun. Little artichoke baby. Grow baby, grow. This is my pepper bed. I've got shishito sweet peppers in here. This will be a green bell pepper. And this is taking some bug damage. So I have to come out here tonight and see who's eating it. I'll try to take it out. If you look closely here, you can see some rabbit poop. I grow my rabbits just for their poop. So it's good to go straight on the garden. Hello, little pepper. What do we have here? A red bell pepper. I planted one watermelon in the middle to just kind of take over. And this is a Kajari melon, which is like a mix between a cantaloupe and a honeydew, kind of comes out of India. I have a volunteer pea. It's not really pea season, but I'll just let it do its thing. This is a Japanese eggplant. It's getting flowers. Oh, look at there! <laughs> I love this time. It's so fun when the garden starts producing stuff. This is another red bell pepper that's growing. Jalapeno, I haven't put in the ground yet. I need to. The California Wonder. Another California Wonder. 
This is like, I ripped the broccoli out but left the roots and it looks like it's growing more broccoli. <laughs> oh my goodness, look what I just found. My first cucumber. Pickling cucumber. This plant isn't even tall enough to reach my trellis yet, so I probably need to come out and prop this up before the bugs get that cucumber. This is going to be chamomile. These are sweet potatoes I have in bins, so I don't have to dig out the sweet potatoes. I'll just dump it all out. Some more peanuts. This is going to be a mammoth bell pepper. Strawberries, strawberries, strawberries. Oh, it's big. I'm going to leave those for the kids. They're going to be so excited. <laughs> and then all along here, I still have many more of the same, just different types of cucumbers and strawberries and peanuts and peppers. Here we have a few more artichoke growing along. So we already ate one of those. And then this one already has three, four more growing on it. So last year, I had my kids try artichoke and they kind of thought it was weird. But when I planted the seeds in, I think it was like November, December area, I really talked it up and I talked to them about how much they loved to like dip it in the butter and scrape it on their teeth with the garlic and whatever. And so it's June 1st and they, June 2nd, whatever. One of the first few days of June. They have been hearing me talk about how excited they are about artichoke for six months and they believe it now. And so we cooked it last night and they loved it. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you garden with your kids, they might eat more vegetables than they ever would have because they're a part of the whole experience, right? Um, the same thing applied with green beans a few years ago. I let them plant the seeds. I let them come out and really water it and baby those green bean seeds and plants. And they love green beans now. So a lot of it is like, in their mind you know several more sweet potatoes so this is the one I just planted and then this just has one plant in it because it's kind of a smaller container but it seems to be doing good let me grab that weed while I'm here this one has four this is the third one I planted so the first ones I showed you were the ones I planted first and then I just had this um, kitty pool and I thought, hey, it's got holes in it. We used it for the ducks last year and um, they had poked a hole into it. And so I figured let's poke a few more holes and turn it into a garden bed. So this is um, peanuts and it looks like I'm getting my first flowers. Peanuts are cool when it flowers. It'll send a shoot from the flower back down into the soil. And that's where the peanuts actually grow is from the little shoot that comes down from the flower. I always thought the roots produced it, but not so much. Strawberries. More, more, more strawberries. So delicious. Okay, now we're heading into this area. So I have all this prickly pear fruit growing on top here. A large dandelion apparently that showed up I didn't even notice <laughs> a lot happens when you're looking down at everything else right more artichokes this is a giant kale we've been eating back at but so much kale so this here is all uh, my corn this year I grew a lot more last year but the rodents got a lot of it so I'm growing less of it this year and hoping that my cats take care of that this year the rodent problem but um let me get close up here and show you around my corn i have now these green beans that will grow up the corn you can see them 
all around here. And they um, will grow up and they'll feed the soil. And then in just a couple weeks, I'm gonna come back in and grow all my squashes in here. And they will trail along the ground all in here. This is a borage that's on its way out. It gets really big and then it topples over. These corn are really starting to come along. So you can see down at the base there, more green beans all along. This corn took a little bit longer. I don't know why this one randomly, this area took longer to come up. So just now the green beans are starting to sprout there. Here we have some more passion fruit growing on this back wall. Another artichoke there, a persimmon tree, a little more corn. This is a rosemary I plan to put over here. This is Lufa. Okay, the sun is getting bright. I am um, back out in the front yard and I was gonna show you the grapes and the loofah along that back. I guess the front fence. So here we are. This is a lot of loofah vine. And here's my very first loofah growing. And then intermixed in here, all these grapes. And these are Concord grapes. Typically you would turn them into like a juice or a jam. But my kids will eat them just like this, they like it. So they'll turn purple in a few weeks. Mmm, tasty treat. More Lufa. All right, well, it's time for me to end my video and get back to the farm, feed those animals. But I hope you enjoyed what you saw today. Um, what is your favorite thing to grow? I wanna know, uh, what are you successful at? Share, <laughs> I like to hear your favorite things to grow. Um, I hope you enjoyed our video. This is Christy with Sapphire Skies Farm. I hope you get a chance today to get outside, get your hands dirty, and enjoy some sunshine. Bye.